Hello everybody. Today's video is on a very major late Victorian poet. W. B. Yeats. William Butler Yeats. He was born in 1865. In which country? Everybody knows. Ireland. It was a time when Ireland was ruled by Britain. And Ireland was fighting for its freedom. Irish independence movement, Irish revolutionary war was happening. At the same time, Irish literary revival was also happening. And W.B. Yeats played a very major role in Irish literary revival. Now, Yeats was one of the founders of the symbolist movement also. In Britain, Symbolism already was being employed by William Blake. Not William Butler Yeats first, but William Blake. He was a transitional poet. There was symbolism in the Romantic poets also. And now in the Victorian period, W.B. Yeats was interested in mysticism, occultism, religions fascinated him. Based on all this, he developed a symbolist style. Symbolist movement in poetry was a book that was published at that time by Arthur Simmons. And W.B. Yeats, later T.S. Eliot were all influenced by this book, Symbolist Movement in Poetry. And this book introduced French symbolism in England. Okay, so we will see what kind of a writer W.B. Yeats was. Very important to know, Ireland was a Catholic country. Are, you know England was Protestant. England was Anglican, isn't it? But Ireland is Catholic. And W.B. Yeats belonged to the Protestant minority in Ireland. Now that is very interesting. Uh, W.B. Yeats was a Protestant in Ireland. That was not easy. And he was also interested in mysticism and occultism, spiritualism, etc. His wife, in his middle age, he married Georgie Hydelees. He met her in an occult group. But all of you might know, before he married Georgie Hydelees, William Butler Yeats was famously in love with Maud Gaughan. Maud Gaughan was an heiress, a very beautiful heiress. And she was a nationalist. She rebuffed Yeats's love. She did not reciprocate it. And uh, Yeats wrote much of his poetry about Maud Gaughan. She, it was probably good that she rebuffed his love because that inspired him to write. Now, like Maud Gaughan, W.B. Yeats was also deeply involved in Irish politics. It was in 1922, much after Yeats started writing, that Ireland became a free state. W.B. Yeats died in 1939. He was a very important official in Irish free state. But much of his poetry was written before Ireland got independence. And W.B. Yeats also was famously critical of the Irish nationalist movement. He was pessimistic of the political scenario in Ireland. That means he was a conservative in politics. He was not eager uh, to have revolutions coming in without any preparation. He was a conservative. Yeats's career can be divided into three phases. In the early phase, Yeats is interested in Irish history, Irish folklore. The first book that was printed by Yeats or published by Yeats was Musada, a dramatic poem, 1886. About that time he was writing many poems also. His early poems came at this time. We will talk about his poetry presently. But before that, let me just give you an overview of his life. So he started writing poems about Irish uh, history and folklore and culture and in 1899 along with Lady Gregory Lady Gregory was a very important aristocratic uh, woman and a public figure at that time 
1899 along with Lady Gregory and Edward Martin, W. B. Yeats founded the Abbey Theatre. The Abbey Theatre suddenly did not come into being one fine day. It developed from uh, various theatres that formed as a result of Irish literary revival. The Abbey Theatre was instrumental in propagating Irish nationalism. Did you know guys? When I went on a literary tour of England and Ireland, I went and watched a performance of Ulysses in Abbey Theatre. It was unforgettable. You should also go get that assistant professor job, save some money at the earliest, soon after the pandemic. Go and do a literary tour of all the museums and authors, places, etc. in England. There are so many. It will change our understanding of English literature, I am telling you. So, Yeats founded Abbey Theatre. You probably know that Yeats was also a playwright. He wrote poetic plays. And did you know Yeats was inspired by Asian theatre, Chinese and Japanese theatre and poetry? And you will be amazed to know that Yeats was inspired by his own secretary or assistant who was none other than Ezra Pound. Ezra Pound worked with W.B. Yeats. There were like 20 years difference between them. There was like, and uh, Ezra Pound introduced Yeats to North Theatre of Japan, Chinese poetry, etc. Japanese North Theatre made use of dance, music, masks, all these things Yeats also experimented with. In Abbey Theatre, another very important figure was J.M. Singe. You know him? Very important playwright. And Abbey Theatre grew out of the Irish Literary Theatre. It was associated with Irish National Dramatic Society, Irish National Theatre Society. Entire history I have given in this Encyclopedia of British Literature, Volume 2, Revised Edition. Many of you have it and you know this is an amazing resource. So, I am using this for my videos so that you will get all these good points. And did you know W.B. Yeats was also involved in the founding of another club called Rhymer's Club. Rhymer's Club involved brilliant writers like Lionel Johnson, Ernest Dowson, they were important writers at this time. Ernest Rice also. Ernest Rice. So, I have given a whole list of people involved here because these are the important ones. Arthur Simmons was also there. Arthur Simmons, who is that? The author of Symbolist Movement in Literature. Now, guys, uh, towards his later career, he became interested in occult and married Georgie Hydlees. But before that, in the middle of his career, what did Yeats do? Yeats wrote modernist poems. This is the time of Second Coming, uh, Eastern 1916, Byzantium poems, etc. The modernist poems came in the middle career. Will you remember? Don't worry, we will talk about the poems. Just wait. Towards the end of his career, he was interested in occultism. He developed his own theory of history. He talked about Gaia's conical shaped uh, circular movement is there in history. You know, every 2000 years, history repeats itself as a cycle. You know that, right? So, all these ideas he developed towards the end of his career. In about 1916, Easter 1916 is what he wrote at that time. That is what you are thinking. Wait, wait, wait. That's not what I am going to say. In about 1916, WBH bought a small castle, stone castle. I have been there. So beautiful, small castle. There, it is called Thur Balaili. There, he stayed and wrote his greatest poems. And this castle is the symbol in his poetry called the Tower. Did you know the tower is also the name of a famous poetry collection by W.B. Yeats. Thur means castle. 
or tower thur balaili and its winding stair there is a winding stair inside to go up to the roof those two are important symbols in yates they symbolize tradition history uh, gyre the winding stair is the gyre or the cyclical movement of history now wb yates's wife georgie hyde lees was an occultist she was like a medium she suddenly went into a trance and started writing on her own without rational involvement tarang tarang automatic writing this is called automatic writing without rational involvement many people did that at this time many avant garde people georgie hydley's also did that automatic writing and this automatic writing wb yates studied and he wrote a book out of it wow that is called a vision it is a prose work uh, based on 4000 pages of georgie hydley's automatic writing 4000 pages wow it comprises this book a vision uh, published in 1937 just before he died comprises his theories of life and history did you get that guys long before he published a vision in the year 1923 wb yates got tell me what he got Nobel Prize in Literature, 1923. That was ten years after. Ten years after, Rabindranath Tagore got Nobel Prize in Literature, and incidentally, W. B. Yeats had written the introduction to Gita Anjali. Wow, what a connection! And then he was the first Irish man to get the Nobel Prize. and the nobel citation said that he showed the spirit of a whole nation in his work in 1922 23 irish civil war is at its peak and he was appointed a uh, senator at that time senator and yates died in 1939 the year in which the second world war began and on his tomb was there an epitaph an epitaph a few lines of poetry on his tomb taken from his own poem under ben bulben under ben bulben what are the lines cast a cold eye on life on death hosman pass by those are the lines that form yeats's epitaph now let us talk about yeats's poems are you ready I told you Yeats's early poetry was about Irish folklore Irish traditional verse he wrote drawing upon myth and folklore he wrote in a pre-raphaelite tone Yeats was associated with the pre-raphaelites at this time and he wrote in a self-consciously ornate descriptive manner His major poems of this time are The Wanderings of Oisin The Wanderings of Oisin is an epic poem, okay? And the Countess Kathleen and various legends and lyrics, all the entire list is given here. The Wind Among the Reeds, etc. These were all written in the end of the 19th century. All right? And then move he moved into the middle period. In the middle period, he wrote very modernist poems. a very major collection of this time is michael roberts and the dancer have you heard it came in 1921 michael roberts and the dancer contains very major modernist poems like i will tell you the beginning of the poem you tell me the end of the poem okay title easter 1916 then the second coming the second coming a prayer for my daughter these are all modernist poems that talk about the chaos and fragmentation of contemporary life the lack of spirituality in contemporary life and he laments this lack of spirituality he longs for a unity what is this this is like the theme of the wasteland same modernist themes were there in all these poems and then he published the collection the tower remember tour belaili 
and here contained the poem it contained the poem sailing to byzantium sailing to byzantium and byzantium are companion poems and uh, they are both modernist in theme okay and he has written other important collections like words for music perhaps and other poems etc it contains byzantium now let me talk to you about these major poems of the middle period easter 1916 refers to the irish rebellion one irish rebellious movement was there in 1916 during easter time the rebellion was unsuccessful many people even died the rebels were executed for treason or oh, it did not succeed yates had not taken the irish revolutionaries very seriously at that time and he is rethinking on some of them he is criticizing them actually and there is a famous stone metaphor a stone metaphor that he presents in easter 1916 a metaphor uh, where he talks about the stone under a stream at the bottom of a stream there is a there are stones these stones will lie there forever immovable like that the work that the irish revolutionaries are doing will remain there forever that is a famous stone metaphor and what is the famous closing line of easter 1916 Bolo famous closing line of Easter 1916 I'm waiting for you to type in the chat box Ta da da tell me Easter 1916 ends with the line a terrible beauty is born that is a very modernist statement referring to the gory battles of history The second coming is a very famous poem I'm sure all of you know it first published in you won't believe this the dial the remember the dial transcendentalist magazine the second coming of christ is the title here but ironically at the end of the poem he is talking about the coming of anti christ what is this world going towards is it the anti christ who is going to be born that is the theme okay the speaker is describing at the beginning of the poem a nightmarish scene it is like horrible chaos that he is describing where the worst are full of passionate intensity but the best lack all conviction best people have no conviction the worst people are full of passionate intensity and at this time he is seeing uh, uh, a vast image of Uh, a sphinx rising out of the spiritus mundi spiritus mundi is the whole ocean of human spirits out of that ocean of human spirits a sphinx is rising from his 2000 year stony sleep the gyre is coming 2000 year turn is coming and then at that time what is happening is a savior going to be born or the antichrist that is the painful thought that the speaker has at the end of the second coming famous poem that you should read do not just end with this video this video is a beginning beginning of a journey into the greatest works of literature you're going to understand deeply enjoy fall in love with literature write exams brilliantly pass with high marks and jrf become assistant professors hena right now a prayer for my daughter yates's daughter anne is born annie is born and she is lying in a cradle yates is looking at the storm that is raging outside the storm represents what the storm represents the war the battles and yates is talking about uh, his daughter his uh, aspiration for his daughter to be uh, married into a very traditional family she must be protected from these storms that is the theme of a uh, prayer for my daughter and throughout the poem he is talking about maud gone in a rather bitter and ironic way sailing to byzantium and byzantium are companion poems 
in sailing to Byzantium, he is disillusioned with Ireland. He is disillusioned with Dublin. He wants to leave this country and he wants to go to Byzantium, which represents eternity, the Byzantine Empire with its capital in Constantinople or Istanbul. He wants to go there. He wants to be a golden bird singing on a tree. Because in Byzantium, Grecian goldsmiths made artifacts like that. Yet says, it is better to be an art form than to be nature, than to be a human being. To be human being means to be traumatized by the complexities of life. He does not want to be natural. He does not want to live in this life, in this world. He wants to be an art form, to be eternal. Somewhat like what Keats said, that art is greater than life in Ode on a Grecian Urn. And in Byzantium, he is that golden bird in Byzantium. He is looking at all the chaos in Byzantium. He is seeing from the Spiritus Mundi, human spirits coming on dolphin back. Like a dance floor, there are spirits coming and crashing like light on the dance floor on a disco floor. Human spirits are coming and crashing and dissolving, you know, more and more and more human spirits. That is human history, isn't it? You and I are just specks of light. We come and blend into humanity and we, we go and other people come and other people come. Other people come endless coming and going of human lives. He's looking at this. He's looking at this dolphin torn, gong tormented sea. He is looking at the sea of humanity, at the sad perplexity of the people of history. And he is concluding with, an, with a modernist angst for the future. That is a poem by Zantium. There are poems like Leda and the Swan which also presented the anxiety, is the world going towards a better future or is it just destruction that awaits us? Leda and the Swan is one of the Annunciation poems. Annunciation means announcement. And then there are later poems like Among School Children. He wrote this in his uh, late middle age or old age, among school children, circus animals, desertion. Uh, among school children is, was written as a senator. He is visiting a school and he is remembering Maud Gone and old age and things like that. Circus animals, desertion is about his own inability to find the themes to write poetry. He is remembering, um, you know, his past poems and writings and finding it a little unable to write poetry now. There are many other important poems like Lapis Lazuli, Meru, an Irish airman foresees his death and so on. And he has also written a lot of poetic plays uh, and prose works. His poetic plays include Masada, the land of heart's desire, the shadowy waters, the countess Kathleen, Major prose works include The Celtic Twilight, A Packet for Ezra Pound, A Vision, you know that already. W.B. Yeats is a major modernist writer as I told you. He inspired Eliot Pound and later modernists like Auden. And he started as a romantic poet but he evolved into a modernist poet because he began to show the torments of a modernist psyche. He expressed his anxiety for uh, the modern world and its future. And uh, he uh, also stood apart from the modernist canon. He was not a typical modernist poet because he used traditional verse genres and styles. He resented the elitist experimental style of Eliot and Pound. So that is W. B. Yeats. So that is W. B. Yeats, a very important poet who is prescribed in many, many universities. Make sure you read uh, his original poems. Many of his poems are so beautiful and very poetic. Uh, many are about love. You would love reading them. 
Guys, you should manage your time. Make sure that you have a timetable. Make sure that every day before going to bed, you read some original works because that is very, very important. When you read original works, you will remember a lot. You will uh, be able to understand the style of poets. You will be able to remember quotations. And I am telling you guys, what you understand from a summary is nothing compared to what you will understand from the experience of a poem or a novel or a play. So you should have a collection of original works in Kindle if possible. Otherwise, you can read original works in Project Gutenberg, which is a free digital resource. You don't have to pay for it. Or you can have your own library with physical books, whatever it is. Or you can take membership in a library. Whatever it is, do original reading and research. Because that is invaluable knowledge that you get from original reading. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Please follow all the videos. Look up the playlist every day at 6 Videopedia. E at 6 Videopedia. You can watch all these videos from the beginning in the correct order and get a thorough understanding of literature. Okay? And we have our books. If you're interested, including the encyclopedia, there are 44 books. If you're interested, check them out in bothetreepublications.org. You can also just WhatsApp us. You can send us uh, WhatsApp messages or call us 938783987. So, happy reading, happy studying. All the best to all of you. Until the next video, bye-bye.